actually incorporated, I guess, 10 days prior to your birthday two years ago on 8-8-2018, eight, eight, because we believe in eights and auspicious numbers. And given our European and US uh, founders, 8-8 eight, eight presents the, a day where we won't have any confusion about what day and month we're talking about, which has some upside. <laughs> We, we are backed by Greylock Partners with Sarah Guo as our, our, our partner and, and lead investor. And Sam Motahemi, if you know Sam, is also a board member from Greylock. And then Workday Ventures participated in our round. So what you'll get throughout the presentation and certainly from our product point of view is we're, we're really focused on extending Workday for those extended workers, those non-employees. And so we have a square focus on serving Workday customers. We think that's a great place to start uh, for our business. And certainly that Workday's equity investment is an indication of the strength of our relationship. Other goodness about Workday, one thing- yeah, is, is the end on your board or advisory board? Or- not on our board, but they are, uh, they have sort of board observation rights, meaning after board meetings, we send them updates of our, our financials. Uh, they don't have a board seat, um, if you will, or voting rights, but they're certainly on the cap table. Um, Leanne and Betsy Bland, if you know Betsy, of course, along the way, you know, Betsy knows a lot, quite a bit about financials, procurement, a lot of what we do touches some of the workflows that she, you know, she knows very well. Uh, and after I was running Workday Financials at Workday, she took over Workday Financials. So, you know, Betsy's, Betsy's close. Uh, but really, Mark Peak, I mean, the entire venture team, Aaron Yang is on the venture team now. So we have good support, I think, across the board at, at Workday, straight up to Anil. Um, you know, one thing you might not know, Workday has Workday Extend. We're the only software partner certified on Workday Extend. So this is the, uh, the newly renamed Workday Cloud Platform, their platform extension capability. So uh, something that we, we take advantage of. So for the, for the number of customers out there that are in fact Workday Extend customers, we think we can offer a, a really great experience. And intellectually think of, you know, with Workday as they continue, I'd say, you know, small steps to roll out their platform efforts we will update them as available. So they made it available in May of this year, as you know, and you know, we've got an a- application built in Amazon Web Services. We have some really technical slides in the appendix that I don't expect we'll get to today. Happy to dive into that if you wanna take a look at the architecture, but think of it as we have an app running in AWS that takes advantage of the Workday Extend building blocks as they have it. Today, we use things like single sign-on, icon on the uh, application palette, on the homepage, those, those types of basic things, one or two visual presentation services pages, but as they have workflows and more ability to persist data, we'll explore taking advantage of that. We're seeing out there, uh, essentially we see that the way work's getting done has changed. And you know, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna read this to you. This is, you know, these are some of the highlights we're seeing. I mean, certainly the, the topic that drew our attention to this space, the, the market opportunity is Henri and I saw it when we, decided to start the company was the growth in this extended workforce, that top left stat. And it's really staggering growth. This is data from Ardent Partners. And in 2010, they had 10% of the working population was what we would call extended, contingent, contract, service base. This is the broad definition of the extended workforce. We happen to not like the word contingent. We think it's more of a disparaging term. But that, if it was 10 years ago, it was 10% of the working population. Today, it's at 43%. So you see this staggering growth in the way work's getting done is increasingly with outside parties. And, and we think that creates a need for new and different solutions. Why? Because more and more is getting outsourced. It's global and distributed. More pressure put on that with COVID. I mean, certainly it's funny, even with our team here, there was a point in time where I was really uncertain whether Neha could be our VP of marketing from Florida, right? And now post COVID when we're what, four or five months in, uh, in a remote world, we're thinking differently about how work's getting done. There's preference, more individuals want to be independent. I don't need to tell you that, but you know, increasingly, you know, tens of millions have chosen to be freelancers, to be independent and you know, digital first. And then lastly, dynamic work models. I, I will say that when you came by our booth and we had a brief chat there at Rising last October, um, it was really on our mind. One thing that, that you mentioned was, you know, the nature of work with, among other things, franchisee networks and others. And we think these dynamic work models um, are really interesting in that how work's mobilizing, getting done quickly, the business entity relationships are different, and it's, it's frequently global, uh, 
from the get-go. You know, I talked to a gentleman, a COO of a, of a large firm, who was describing their digital operations group to me that includes sort of legal work, straight at court, courtroom steps, sending digital versions of case law to the Philippines, to China, to India, gets digitized, gets tagged, gets put into a searchable database, comes back, gets packaged up, and that's a core part of their offering. He has literally a division called their digital operations group. And we see that more and more, just that the way work is getting done, you couldn't even imagine it, you know, 15, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago. And so this is, this is what we mean by dynamic work models. Um, you know, more project-based, less kind of role hierarchy uh, reporting structure, and certainly, you know, more with the extended workforce. Remember Y2K? Okay, we're gonna add two more digits and everything's gonna break. That's when, that's when folks like SAP Fieldglass got going. Uh, and Beeline for that matter. So we respect them in that they have a 22 year head start on 22 year head start on functionality, but yeah, it's just, can you imagine what a different world is then, let alone 10 years ago, how about 22? So, so we're working on a visual for this. Uh, we're actually four or five weeks out from a, a website refresh, but you know, essentially we're, we're building an extended workforce system. And, and we believe that the extended workforce system is the right nomenclature to represent this broader capability for all of these extended workers, all of this non-employee workforce. And that the systems we see on the market, primarily by that I mean vendor management systems like a SAP Fieldglass, they really were focused on one type of worker, namely staff augmentation, kind of contingent workers brought to you by a staffing firm. And if you go back to that digital operations example I just described, you mentioned franchisees, the list goes on and on, BPO, service-based contracts. You know, it's just that there is so much different variety of work going that we believe there's a, a system need for that that's more worker-centric. Yes, brings visibility, compliance control, all those kind of good things. And then again, our design point, particularly at this juncture in the company, is squarely focused on workday customers. And so you'll see that in our product demo. So put differently, as we see opportunities in our pipeline, if they're not a workday customer, we qualify them out. Right, so we're squarely focused on extending workday for the extended workforce. But what, what's out there? Uh, it's a mess out there. I mean, it's, it, it, takes, it takes me back to the early days when I first met Henri, circa 2008 of workday, where we, we would look and say, you know, do you have a global employee headcount report you can rely on? The answer was always no. And it was really for two reasons. There were fractured systems around the globe. Systems weren't designed to be, uh, you know, one system that can handle all the varieties of workers. And then it was always changing. And it's meaning reorgs, changes, divestitures, acquisitions, et cetera, new hires. And so, so what we see is it's sort of that plus an intermediary. It's you know, hundreds of suppliers. So you really have this multi-entity workforce coming together because it's, it's yes, the end enterprise making the employment. It's the workers themselves. And we have a worker-centric design principle. But what's unique about this market is you have an intermediary. You have a staffing firm, you have your LLC, you have your consultancy, you have your BPO entity, you have your catering firm. And, and frequently that staffing firm or that intermediary is managed by somebody else. In this case, in the staffing world, managed service providers. And so you have all of these players coming together with different lenses on the data. And, and very commonly, we'll talk to a Workday customer. Workday is a single global system of record for employees. And then they'll have two or three instances of field glass with two or three different managed service providers in different geos. And, and it's a mess out there. It results in a lack of a single system of record, uh, no real good visibility into the workers. And then as you can imagine, a pretty poor hiring manager experience. So, so what is our focus? Like we think there's a better way. The systems and the approaches we see in the past were essentially transaction focused. Uh, they're certainly siloed. And, and essentially, I mean, the real key, we believe, is they, they, they lend themselves to only having a piece of the picture. The typical vendor management system, despite, or on average, the vendor management systems, despite having a 22-year uh, head start in the market, they capture about 13% of the spend on non-employee labor. And, and we, think, we think that is just a problem. Wow. You know, so 87, so you got an 87% blind spot in what's going on out there. And we believe that the right approach, a better way is a worker-centric view. It's actually talent. 
It's just maybe not your exact employee talent, but it's a talent continuum. And these you know, individuals are coming and doing a variety of work for you in these more dynamic engagements. So we have words here about how we go to market, sourcing, engagement, and of course, spend. But um, let me just say we're differentiated on five points and I'm gonna, I'm gonna accelerate to the demo with Rita here in, in a minute. So Workday Native, we'll show that. Uh, again, it's our, it's our sole go-to-market focus right now. Multi-entity solution, a little harder to show this, but think of it as, uh, you know, we're creating a system with a security model and a workflow model robust enough to bring these different actors together to get, you know, to kind of run these projects, get people paid, have visibility. You know, we think of this as a global work graph as a really compelling part of our story. Very hard to pull off, but if you will, if there's architectural magic under the hood, it's a global work graph. I mean, we've been internally referring it to the global work graph because this idea of, you know, that McDonald's franchisee, the Apple extended network, all the things we're discussing is centric. So um, Erica mentioned it well with the certifications, you know, what common pattern we're seeing is yes, I'm outsourcing work to some, some other party that maybe is better at it, more skilled for lots of good reasons. But I, I still i am on the hook to prove that they're eligible to do the work I'm asking them to do. And then simplified pricing. So we're going to bring SaaS, essential pay-as-you-go, proactive worker pricing into this market. Certainly, we're going to have offer financial incentives to, to buy a year, buy longer chunks of time. But the, the high-velocity nature of this work is on our mind. You know, we have one life sciences prospect that has 20,000 workers come and pack pills and bottles in cold and flu season, even pre-COVID, over an eight-week period. And so you have these engagements that are lasting between two and eight weeks. You know, you can't have your typical software like charge me for a year. Um, so, so keep these five in mind as, I, as I'll just accelerate to our demo. And again, we're gonna make these available to you. And I'll turn it to Rita to set this up and then show off the product. Okay, thank you then. Okay, Vinny, so today uh, we're going to go to five items and the first three are what we are calling at most core, which is the visibility, compliance and or um, analytics uh, capabilities. And uh, next two will be how we apply that to transactions. And we'll give two examples and this will be the first one uh, related to source, which will be front door and the other one related to spend, which will be the time entry. Okay, with that, I'll start with the demo. And um, of course, the demo will start in Workday because again, we want to uh, show that we are uh, extending Workday and we're providing a Workday native experience. And therefore, um, you will see as part of the applications within the Workday tenant. If I click on it, uh, this is a configurable area that we'll have in Workday. Right now, we're exposing some part of the data that we have. But from here, you would go to utmost. And as we mentioned before, uh, we are natively connected to, to Workday, but we are a separate IWS uh, solution. Uh, even if when you land in, in utmost, you have the same look and feel as you were still in Workday, that's of course, uh, we, we, we made sure that we, we would have that experience for Workday users. Uh, but let's start with the first one, which would be visibility and one, We'll start with the total uh, workforce views that we have available in Atmos. Let me show one, which is the workflow classification by location. And here is a simple world view where you can see the ratio between uh, employees and non-employees. We, of course, we are marrying the data that exists in Workday with the data that we'll have in Atmos. And from here, you can zoom in to certain regions, have a look, for example, in India, you see there is more non-employees than employees, and that's a common outsourced location. If I go, for example, to Brazil, you see more employees. Uh, that could be according to the fact that there is actually a pro-employee law in Brazil. So there is a lot of information already with this powerful view. Um, from here, let me take the lens into the non-employee population. And we'll go and talk about the workforce classification by location. Just another a total workforce view that is very powerful as well. Understanding the classification mix per, for example, if I go to the United States per state. And there's a, a lot of things that could be answered here. If this was according to what was planned. Uh, is this according to the different state laws, for example? Just a general information how uh, 
the work is being done and where it's being done. Um, we can zoom in into my favorite product place in the world will be Por Portugal and you can see a full independent contractor uh, population, for example. But from here, and I'll stop here uh, and, and I don't know if Erica wants to give an extra story on this one. No, I mean, I think, I think you did just, you know, just great. When I think about back when I was consulting, a lot of folks would ask like, what, what's the right workforce mix? And it was always a funny question because they didn't actually know what they had. So what does it matter the ratio? You need to get the visibility first. And then the answer was, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there's no right answer to that. It's what did you think was happening? Did you know you were outsourcing this versus insourcing this? Does it feel right? What are the country laws? So one of the things as a former CW practitioner, I love it that this about this view is that how you operate and the regulations matter.